Hello and welcome to this WPL Finals edition of Game On. Alongside Mike Byers, I'm Andrew Chiepazy. We are here at Blackhawk High School where the Cougar girls are getting ready for their championship game in the AAA bracket Saturday against South Fayette. So we'll chat with Blackhawk point guard Chastity Omogrosso. We'll shine the spotlight on Beaver Falls sophomores Donovan Jeter and Josh Creech, and we'll take a look at what else to watch for in the WPL Finals this weekend. All that and more coming up next on Game On. We've got those cameras rolling. We'll show you the dunks, the drives, and the shots from downtown. Basketball is the star of this show, and we'll bring it to you like you've never seen it before. Get ready for tip-off. It's game on. Well, we began with 23 local teams in the WPL playoffs, and now... We're down to three. The Blackhawk girls, Beaver Falls boys, and Aliquippa boys are all contending for WPL titles this weekend. And Mike, let's begin with our host, Blackhawk girls, the only defending champion returning from our area. And, you know, we all thought that Blackhawk would get to this point. We thought that they were so good because of their four seniors. And through their first two games, you know, they blew them, uh, their opponents out by 20 points each. Had a little bit of a tough test against Chartiers Valley, but they still pulled through. And here they are again, the Blackhawk girls contending for another Whitfield championship. Yeah, AJ, this program really has it going. Uh, they already have six Whitfield titles, this program. Steve Lodovico has two titles, including the state championship last year. They have the main gun, star player, Chastity Omagroso, the Whitfield's leading scorer. So that's a very excellent basketball team. Absolutely. And you know, Mike, you know, uh, they're unbeaten in 2015. Any issues that they had from a championship hangover or trying to incorporate a couple new girls into the rotation. They worked those out in December in 2014, but since the calendar turned to 2015, they are unbeaten. And you know what? Even with a couple of hiccups against Chartiers Valley, I'm not sure that I would want to be on the opposing bench facing Blackhawk this weekend. Yeah, and of course, uh, Blackhawk's playing South for yet. The, 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 the Cinderella team so far sure. in, in the playoffs, the 10th seed, um, I saw South Fayette play twice so far. I saw them beat Ambridge. Uh, they were a very good basketball team, very hard-nosed, but I just can't see South Fayette stopping Blackhawk on Saturday. Let's stay in AAA now and move to the Beaver Falls boys. Uh, first year at AAA level since 1994, I think, or somewhere in the mid-'90s, and yet they make it right to the championship game after a very, very entertaining game against Newcastle the third time those two teams had met. What do you make of this Beaver Falls team being able to get to the championship game in just their first year back in AAA? Well, first of all, I've said this all along, AJ. I've said it in print and on our videos that I admire Coach Doug Biega for making that bold move playing up. But, of course, he has a lot of talent there. That's a very good basketball team. They're very young, and they're led by those two super sophomores, Josh Creech and Donovan <laughs> Jeter. Very good basketball team. But I will say this. They're in for a tough game Friday night against Indiana. Blackhawk point guard Chastity Omagroso's resume is pretty well known at this point. She's headed to Duquesne. She's the WPL's leading scorer. And, of course, she's leading Blackhawk back to the WPL championship game this weekend. And now she joins us here on the set. Chastity, welcome to the show. Thank you. Chastity, here we are. It's Whippeal Championship Weekend. And Blackhawk girls are once again playing in a championship game just like last year when you guys won and were on a win state championship. Uh, what's it like being back again? Uh, just your thoughts on being back in this big game for the second straight year. Um, it's a great feeling, but we know we aren't done yet. Like, our goal is to win it. Even though we got there, we're not satisfied until, like, we actually win it. And hopefully that's what we'll do on Saturday. Which one is tougher, winning that first title or trying to defend your title as you guys will do on, on Saturday? Uh, I, think, I think definitely trying to defend it, just winning like back-to-back. -back. I think winning two is obviously harder than winning just one. I mean, getting there is hard enough, so I mean, definitely getting back twice. Chastity, you guys were number one seed in AAA, and you, you made it to the championship game, and you're playing a South Fayette team, maybe, maybe it's Cinderella, a number 10 seed. Uh, what do you see from South Fayette? Are you surprised that they're in this championship game? Um, well, I mean, I wasn't expecting to play South Bay, but obviously they made it here for a reason. So in coming in, we talked about it earlier that they were underrated coming in. So we know they can play, obviously. They made it to the final, so that's obviously big. Chastity, you're a senior. You've been starting since your freshman year. So has your fellow senior, Courtney Vinoy. Over the past four years, the Blackhawk girls have gone an amazing 101-12 and 12 and 22-4 and in the playoffs. Uh, what do you make of that streak, and how have you guys done it? 
Uh, I mean, I don't. I think just playing together for so long, definitely uh, from like third grade, like all four of us seniors, and uh, like our chemistry, and then definitely as we got older, just like our experience has helped us a lot carry us through like the playoffs. I think. Courtney, the Blackhawk girls have won six Whippeal titles over the years. Two with Dory Anderson when she was the coach here. Two with Mike DeChalice, and now it's two with Steve uh, with uh, Steve Odovico. Uh, what is the what's happening out here in, in Cougar Country? I mean, why are the girls so good in basketball? I'm not sure, but I heard like the girls coming up are going to be pretty good too. So hopefully they can continue that. Chastity, thanks for your time today. Uh, good luck in the championship game to you and the Cougars. Thanks Thank you. In the past, when Beaver Falls has won Whippeal championships, it's been seniors leading the way. But this year, it's two super sophomores, Josh Creech and Donovan Jeter. They aren't exactly giant skyscrapers, but Josh Creech and Donovan Jeter are definitely twin towers for the Beaver Falls Tigers. Creech is a 6'6", 15-year-old. Jeter is a 6'5", 16-year-old. They're sophomore sensations who lead the Tigers in scoring. They both average around 18 points per game. So as a tandem, they present one tough challenge for any team that plays Beaver Falls. I don't like battling with five minutes and practice with them, so I know them, them other people don't like going 32 minutes with us. So, I mean, it's a luxury to have two six, well, two six five and a six six kid, so. If you start one of us, you gotta get the other one. That's gonna be very hard to do. Last year as ninth graders, Creech and Jeter were role players, but as 10th graders, they're prime time stars who have let Beaver Falls into Friday's Whippeal AAA Championship game. This is what you've been waiting for all year. I mean, we didn't get it last year, but this is why we worked to, do, to get here again, and this is how we're going to win. In Beaver Falls' proud basketball tradition, the Tigers have won nine Whippeal Championships. On Friday, Creech, Jeter, and their teammates will try to make it number 10. And it's more than just playing for our program. It's playing, we're playing for a whole city. So, I mean, it's real big for us. I, just to get there is big, but we want it to be even, even bigger, especially the sophomores. So I mean, it'd be nice. Well, we've taken a look at two of the championship games our local teams are involved in so far, but we still have the Class AA boys to get to. So let's take a look at what to watch for in that game, as well as the rest of the WPL finals this weekend. And Mike, the Aliquippa boys were pretty much the dominant team in Class AA about 10 years ago. They won four out of five championship games. The only loss, it was right in between when they lost in triple overtime to Beaver Falls. But then they were quiet for a little while, and now they're back. They're undefeated, and here they are playing for a double-A championship once again. It's pretty impressive how they've turned things back around. Well, two things, A.J. First of all, they hired last year Nick Lakovic as, as their coach. He's a Quip alum. He played for the Quips. He was an assistant there for a lot of years. And he's really brought back a lot of tradition to that program. Number two is they have good talent. Uh, Chucky Humphreys is a great player. Kayson Pugh is a good player. Jasir George is a good player. Darian Fields is a good player. And, of course, the great Stephen McGinnis, <laughs> who transferred from Ambridge to the Quips this year. What a great pickup that was for Alacopa. The thing that stands out to me is with all of that talent, they play great defense and no matter what's going on on the offensive end if a team is trying to maybe slow the pace down a little bit and hold the ball on offense they'll just hound you up and down the floor on defense and make it tough for you to score so they'll play a low scoring game until it finally breaks open and they get out and run and you know suddenly a 20 point explosion in the fourth quarter like I saw uh, you know a week or so ago against Ford City it was a, a ugly low scoring game and then suddenly Al Copa explodes and yeah. it was all over. AJ, you're right about the Quips being great on defense, but they're also very unselfish on offense. Sure, McGinnis is a tough gun, but other guys can score too. When they beat Greensboro Southern Catholic in the semis, three other guys were double figures, Kazon Pugh, Jasir Jordan, and also Chucky Humphrey. So a lot of guys can score for that team. You know, we, we have some interesting matchups, and Alan Cooper and Seton LaSalle is certainly one of them. But as you take a look at all three of our teams, Mike, they are all – the favored seed. They're the higher seed. They're the better seed. So which out of our three teams do you think is maybe up for the most difficult challenge or faces the toughest matchup? I think Beaver Falls is in for an excellent game against Indiana. I saw them beat um, Ambers a couple days ago. Um, Indiana is a gigantic team. They go 6'5", 6'4", 6'4", 6'3", and 6'2". Obviously, Beaver Falls has those great softboards in Creighton Jeter, but 
Indiana's a very good team. They're tall, they're strong, they're athletic. Outstanding basketball team. That should be a very good basketball game. You know, I saw Blackhawk take on Chartier's Valley in the semifinals, and while the Blackhawk girls ended up pulling away because of some great adjustments by the coaching staff and, and just some excellent play from Chastity Omagroso, the way Chartier's Valley defended and, and played at times really makes me wonder what the matchup is going to be like against South Fayette because South Fayette is one of the better defensive teams in the WPIL. They allowed 60 points or more just twice all season, and Blackhawk averages almost 70 points per game. So if South Fayette can slow the pace down and get Blackhawk into that half-court offense, which is maybe their weakness right now, that could make things very interesting. But if Blackhawk gets out and is able to run and do their transition offense, Blackhawk's going to run away. And here's one more question mark about South Fayette. They have a girl named An- Emily Anderson who's six foot four. Uh, she's a major college recruit. However, she injured her knee in the semifinal win against mm-hmm. Elizabeth Ford, and she didn't play the rest of that game, so her health could be a question. If she misses the game, South Bay is in deep trouble, and if she's even hurt a little bit, that could be a factor also. Well, that does it for this edition of Game On. Be sure to follow us on Facebook for any news and updates that you might have missed throughout the week. Make sure you join us at timesonline.com on Friday night and Saturday for all the Whippy Old Championship action involving our teams. You'll see videos, stats, and stories. And, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter with the hashtag TimesHoops for all the latest news and updates from those of us here at timesonline.com. For Mike Byers, I'm Andrew Chiapese. Goodbye from Blackhawk and Game On.